Hello and welcome to our Verbling class on homophones. Today's class focuses on speaking and pronunciation. So we'll be doing a little bit of grammar and pronunciation work and learning some rules for telling different homophones apart. So uh, please click on the green join class button if you would like to join this class. And we will go over some homophones and do some fun activities where we tell different homophones apart. So join the class. We'll wait for some people to join and then we will go ahead and get started. Um, hi everyone, how are you doing? Hello. I'm doing fine. Alright, cool. Yeah, so for those of you who are viewing the class, uh, click join class. And uh, once we have a mostly full class, um, we'll get started. I think I have all of the materials ready. Um, we'll give it another couple of seconds and then we'll start. Um, today is one of the first times on Verbling that we have opened up multiple classes for one time slot. Um, you'll start to see on the website that there may be two classes available for a given hour slot. Um, that's because we have enough teachers now that we can um, and fill all the class slots, which is awesome because it means more classes for you guys and more time um, teaching for us. So uh, my class is going on at the same time as another one this morning, and you'll start to see that. Um, so pay attention to the website and make, make sure to choose when you have two classes at once, make sure to choose which one you'd like to attend. I think it's cool because you guys are going to have a lot more choices of classes. Um, all right, so we are mostly full, so I'm going to go ahead and start class. Um, so I, I'm Libby. For those of you who don't know me, I am a verbling teacher. And I'm American, but right now I'm living in France, in northern France. And I'm very excited because a couple of days ago it snowed here. It doesn't usually snow here. So um, outside there is a lot of, well not a lot, but some snow on the ground. So I'm a very happy person because of that. Um, so before we start today talking about homophones, I would love to um, just meet all of you. First, I, I'm trying to figure out who has background noise. Um, so give me one, one second, and I'm just going to try to clear that up for us. Okay, I'm not sure, but sounds like it's getting better. All right, um, so, so let's see. Today I would like to meet you guys by learning your names. I would like to know what country you are in right now. Um, and... I would like to know um, what is your what is your favorite mm, what's your favorite thing to eat for dinner? So I like to talk about food a lot. You'll notice. Um, so for dinner, um, so my name is Libby. I'm in France, and my favorite thing to eat for dinner is stuff. I really like. Pasta with pesto. So uh, first, let's see. I would like to have um, uh, Abdurrahim. Are you here? Okay. Um, 
I can't hear you, so I'm guessing you don't have a working microphone, um, which is fine. You can participate in the chat uh, by typing. Uh, let me know if you get that, if that changes. Uh, next, we have Ahmad. Ahmad, how are you? Fine. How are you? Very fine. <clears throat> are, you, are you here, Ahmad? Is, yeah, yeah, I am here. Okay. Can you hear me? Good. Uh, how are you all? Yeah, I can hear you now. Uh, my name, yeah, my name is Ahmad. Great. Great. Uh, and my favorite uh, dish and dinner maybe is uh, potato, a special kind of potato uh, that fries uh, in a small amount of uh, olive oil. So it will be delicious. Yeah, that because sounds really I am, good. I am in a special diet because I have a, uh, a trouble in my uh, uh, IBS syndrome. Oh yeah. Yeah. But you can still you can still eat potatoes. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's good. That's good. All right. Great. Well, thank you. Next, we have uh, Frederic. Are you here, Frederic? Okay. Um, let me know if you get your microphone working. Um, let's see. Next, we have Giovanni. Giovanni, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Uh, well, my favorite uh, dish for dinner, I think, will be uh, pozole, which is a Mexican dish. I mean, currently in Mexico, it's 2 a.m. in the morning, and I can't sleep right now because, well. I'm not going uh, until February to school, so just taking some time to hang out here. Good. Well, I'm sorry you can't sleep, but I'm glad that you're spending time on verbling. <laughs> that makes me happy. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. It's nice to meet you. Um, okay. Next, we have Hani. Hani, are you here? Yes, I'm here. My name is Hani. I'm from Egypt. And what is your favorite thing to eat for dinner? Mm, I, I leave that to my wife. She, <laughs> I, I don't matter. Uh, okay. <laughs> as long as we have something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Good answer. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have um, Hashem. Yeah, how are you? Good, thanks. Uh, I'm Hisham from Egypt. Uh, my favorite dish is a uh, mixed grill between uh, chicken and uh, meat with pasta. <laughs> yeah, great. Sounds awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, when you're next. Yeah, hello. My name is Huen. I'm from Vietnam. And, uh, yeah, I can eat anything for dinner, really. <laughs> cool. I remember one time you gave a recipe, you showed a recipe for papaya salad. I think that would be a pretty good thing to eat for dinner. In the, in the no, summer, maybe. Oh, no, it's not a thing to eat for dinner because it has no uh, stash. Oh, I see. So it would be like a like a, a snack or a starter, and then you would have the real dinner. Yeah. Is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm vegetarian, so often I will eat. I could, I probably could eat pop, papaya salad for dinner. I don't know. I eat a lot of salads, but certainly not in the winter. I'd be too hungry. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So next we have Igor. Uh, yes. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. My name is Igor. I am from Republic of Moldova. I, I was on uh, your last class. Do you remember? Yes. About yeah, I remember. I'm sorry. I, I haven't gotten a chance to respond to your question on Facebook, but I, I will respond today. Okay. I am waiting. Okay. And, um, um, I like um, uh, fish, vegetables, um, and uh, ice cream. Great. What cool. do you like? For um, I I like um, pasta with pesto. That's one of my favorite dinners. I really like Italian food too. So, um, yeah, pasta with pesto sauce. 
Okay. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, your camera is freeze. Uh, I mean, uh, image is not clear. Yeah. Oh, you, okay. you may uh, have a problem with uploading speed. With connection because something. You are, because uh, you're talking, you but uh, your face is not moving. Uh, okay. Um, can you can you hear my voice, or does my yeah, voice of course. break? Yeah, of course. Okay. But um, yeah, I think it's because um, I'm using. I'm using a wired internet connection. I have a cable, but I think it's still um, it's not a very good connection. So um, for now, I guess uh, let me know if my if there are problems with my voice. But until then, um, I think I might have to just keep this internet connection because there's nothing I can do to change the connection right now. Um, but if if my voice gets bad, just tell me. And, my voice is uh, Otherwise, I can put up a. I might just put up a picture instead of my video if it's if it's distracting. Um, you so. can uh, turn. Uh, you can um, disconnect your camera and after that connect. Uh, maybe it will be better. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it might just be bad internet. But yeah, in any case. Yeah. Okay. In any case, um, once we get started, hopefully I'll be doing some screen sharing, and you won't ha you won't have to look at the choppy image of me anyway. Um, so sorry about that, everyone. For my next class, I'll make sure to have a better connection. Um, all right. So let's see. The next person uh, is Kamal. Kamal, are you here? Yeah. Yeah. My name is Kamal Arora. I am from India. And my favorite dish for dinner is shahi paneer. It's an Indian dish. Um, is is the it does paneer mean that it has um, spinach cheese. in it? Oh, no, no, paneer is cheese. Oh, okay, yeah. I I always have like palak it. palak paneer, which is cheese you have, and spinach. Okay. That's what I always and have. you should try shahi <laughs> paneer. So it's it's cheese with what kind? It just uh, is it like a red kind of sauce or what kind of yeah, sauce? Yeah, yeah, red, red kind, red, red sauce. Oh man, I love Indian food. I really love Indian food. Especially <laughs> tikka masala. Yeah, tikka masala is really good too. Yeah. No, I, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat non-veg. Oh, I actually, I, I've had um, in America. I had, I think it was paneer tikka masala. Yeah, it was like yeah, cheese yeah, it's, with it's tikka good. masala, which was it, that was good. Yeah, too. It's, it's delicious. It's paneer yeah. tikka. Okay, yeah, really, really good. Yeah, okay, we can thank chat you. a lot over food. Yeah, yeah seriously, I can, I can I can teach a whole class on what food I love. It's easy. Okay, yeah. um, thank you very much. And our last person is Yi. Yi, are you here? Okay, so so Yi says uh, I love spicy. Food. Okay, very cool. Um, thank you. It's nice to meet you. So Yi, we'll look for you participating in the written chat down there. All right. Um, so thank you, everyone. It's nice to meet all of you. Um, again, sorry for my internet connection. And hi, hi to Fendi. Hi to all of you who are participating in the chat. I love participation in all forms. So if you if the class is full and you can't join, definitely make sure to um, participate in the chat. Or if you are in if you are in the class, also um, participate via typing anytime you want. I love to hear from you all. So we're going to get started on today's class material. I really like this topic because I think it's a really useful one for pronunciation. So um, in English, we have these words that are called homophones. And that's what I wanted to talk about for the class today, is what are homophones, why are they a little bit difficult, and um, how are, what are some ways that we can practice using homophones and telling the difference between them. So as I usually do, I'm going to start by defining my uh, terms that I'm using. So I'm trying to get this website for you, but my computer is frozen. Okay, I think that's working. Yeah. So I'm going to give you guys a definition of, of homophones first before we get started. So I just posted a link in the verbal classes box. 
So please open that link and you can see um, the website that I want to show you. And before we go over this website, does anyone already know what homophones are? What are homophones? Homophones are the words that have the same pronunciation, but different. Good. Okay. So they, they, they have the same sound. They sound the same, but they have a different meaning. They mean something different. So if you open this website, you can see see that that's what it says there as well. Um, this website is called Our Homophones. And um, it says, homophones are words that have exactly the same sound or pronunciation, but different meanings and usually a different spelling. Um, so these can be difficult because when you read them, you might not know how to pronounce them or you might not know that two words have the same pronunciation. Um, so the example that this website gives us is, it says the following two words have the same sound, but different meanings and spelling. Um, our and our. So obviously they're pronounced the same way, um, but they don't mean the same thing. Um, what, is, what is an hour with an H? H-O-U-R, what's that? Measure of time. Good. Yeah. It's a measure of time. It's 60, 60 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Good. Excellent. An hour, 60 minutes. What about the second one, O-U-R? What does that mean? Possessive. Good. It's a possessive. It means it belongs to us. Okay. Hour is a possessive, <coughs> meaning it belongs to me and someone else. Okay. Um, then another example of homophones, the next example that's given, this is an example of homophones that have the same sound and the same spelling, but they have different meanings. So what's the important part about homophones is same sound, different meanings, and then often a different spelling, but not necessarily. So the first one is bear, as in the, the animal, the big uh, fuzzy animal that lives in the woods. And then bear, as in to carry. So those two words sound the same and they're spelled the same, but they don't mean the same thing. Um, you can determine the meaning of these words by the context. So that's what we do when we, when we read homophones in a sentence. We look at the words and we figure out which one they're talking about based on the context, based on how, uh, how it's used. Okay, so the reason that we call homophones homophones. Um, if you guys look in this sort of yellow or tan box here down at the bottom, um, can someone read what it says in this box out loud for the class, please? Yeah. I can read. Um, the word sorry, I, yeah, go ahead. Someone go ahead. Yes, the word homophone is made of two combining forms. Homo from Greek word homes, meaning same. Phones uh, from Greek word phones, meaning voice or sound. You will see uh, many of other English words using one or other these uh, combining forms. Good. Okay. Thank you. So Thank the you. word homophone is made from those two combining forms, homo, uh, homo, homo and uh, phone. So. Uh, homo means same, and phone means sound, same sound. Um, can you tell me an example? Can someone tell me an example of another word that uses one of these two combining forms? So what's an English word that either contains homo or phone? Homogeneous. Good, homogeneous. And what does homogeneous mean? Homogeneous. <coughs> Homogeneous. Same, that same word, my person. Yeah, it means it means usually it's referred. To, uh, yeah, it means there's a group of something, people or anything, and they're all the same. Homogeneous yeah. means they're all the same. So like there, we can also see uh, homo meaning same, and this mm -hmm. is a good way if you're not sure the meaning of a word. Uh, that's a really good root to look at. Um, can someone give me another example? Homo sapiens. Homosexual. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, Homo, homo sapiens um, 
And that one's uh, partially because homo does refer to, um, I guess, man as a, as, as a species. Um, so that's a little bit different. But um, yeah, homosexual is another great example. So homosexual, same, people who are attracted to people of the same sex. Um, yeah. Okay, so that, again, you can see you can see homo coming out as the root there. Um, so homosexual is a good example. Another one that I was thinking of is homonym. Um, what's a homonym? Those are the words uh, that are written in the same way, but uh, they are pronounced in different ways. Excellent. Good. So something like, like knife. knife. Um, yeah, if you typed, if you type it, I'll probably be able to know what you mean. Sorry, I lost this. Um, so, like, the, the, the example I was thinking of is wind and uh, wind. Wind and wind are spelled the same way, but they're pronounced uh, differently. So those are examples of homonyms. Uh, yeah, Huynh gives the example of content. Content and content are both um, spelled the same way, but they mean different things. So those are homonyms, yeah. So today what we're going to be talking about is homophones. And maybe we'll actually talk a little bit about um, homonyms if we get time. Yi is giving us another example of a homonym, uh, desert and dessert. So the desert is a warm, sandy place. And to desert someone is to leave or to go away. So that's another example of a homonym. But for now, we're going to do some more practice with homophones. So let's take a look at a, 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 um, a rule that I find is very helpful for studying homophones. Again, you'll see the link there in the verbling classes. So, so open up that link. <coughs> Okay. All right. So this is the the next website I wanted you guys to take a look at. Um, this is a rule that we're going to go over that really helps for understanding homophones. Um, so like it says here, the magic E is an incredibly useful spelling rule that all native speakers learn when young, but other learners of English are often unaware of. The basic version is that an E after a short vowel sound and a single consonant makes the vowel say its name, i.e. take the pronunciation of that letter when you say the alphabet. So first of all, um, you guys probably already know this, but um, which letters in English are the vowels? What are the vowels? E, E, I, O, I, O, U, E. Good. Uh, A, E, I, I, O, U. Those are the vowels. Um, and as we say, uh, and sometimes Y. So every word contains at least one vowel by definition in English. Yeah. Um, so the vowels are sort of the words that make sounds. And these vowels are tricky, as you guys know, because they can be pronounced different ways depending on how they're written in the word. Okay, so and the, the consonants, the consonants are all the other letters. Um, so the consonants are any letters that are not A, E, I, O, and U, and sometimes Y. Okay, good. So here it says, an E after a short vowel sound and a single consonant makes the vowel say its name. So this is the word that this is the rule that we're going to be talking about. It sounds a little bit confusing in the abstract, but as you'll see, it makes a lot of sense once you read it. Um, so the first one set the first example is for the letter A. So let's look at this for the letter A. It says A and at changes to A uh, low a big A in eight. Okay. Um, for example, when changing from hat to hate. Um, so with an A, when it just says A-T, it's pronounced as at. 
When there's an A-T-E, it's pronounced as eight. We can remember this because that adding that E to the end makes the A say its name. It makes the A sound like A, okay? So instead of at, once you add an E, it's eight. A is literally saying its name. It's being pronounced as the letter A. So at and eight, hat and hate. And that's because when you add the E on the end, it makes the A say its name. Um, so the next example is for E. E in set changes to big E in peat. For example, when changing from met to meet. All right, so again, adding on an E at the end makes that first E say its name, meet, meet. It's pronounced as a long E. Can someone please read the example for I, making sure to focus on the pronunciation? Can someone try to read this for us, please? Which one? Again, me. The one that's highlighted right now, the one for I. Maybe me. I, uh, it, uh, it changes to I, in right? Each you when we uh, win, it changes from a pet to bite. Good, okay. So, so, the long I sound, or the I pronunciation, is expressed when you add an E on the end. So, bit to bite. Okay, can someone please read, um, Ahmad, can you please read for O, the example? Yes. O and hot, <laughs> and hot change to O in chalk. Example, we're changing from hop to hop. Good, perfect. And can someone please read the example for you? Who would like to read it for you? I okay, read it. Well. Okay, whoever, whoever said it first can go <laughs> ahead. I, I couldn't tell. <laughs> You well. in part change to you in use. Uh, Ag when changing from cute uh, from cat to cute. Okay, good. Thank you. So underneath it, it says learning the homophones of words with a magic e in them can help you learn this pronunciation and spelling rule. If you already know this rule, you can then use it to learn the words that are homophones. For example, using your knowledge of how to say bass as a way of remembering the difference between bass guitar, which has the same pronunciation, and bass, the fish, which is different. So if you know this rule, you can use it to remember some of these homophones. And what you're saying is I help you to remember the definitions. So let's go over a few of these examples. And with this, we'll also go over some English vocabulary. And as we're doing this, I would love it if you guys could tell me if there are any of these words that you don't understand or that you don't know the definition of. Because this is a study of grammar and pronunciation, but we're also going to be studying vocabulary. Um, so bef go ahead. Did, you, did someone have a question? Days. What's the meaning of days and gays? Good. Uh, days. And can you type in the chat when you ask so that I know which homophone you're referring to? Okay. Can you type in the verbal in classes? There it is. Okay, days. So days, D-A-Z-E, is a state of confusion or a state of sort of being out of it. When you're in it, we, we use the expression in a daze to mean that you are spacing out, you're kind of confused and you don't really know what's going on mm -hmm. in a daze. And this? Uh, and then gaze, G-A-Z-E. Gaze refers to your eyes when you look at something. Um, that That's your gaze. Uh -huh. So if you attract, maybe you might attract someone's gaze, that means uh, that, means that person looks at okay. you. All right. Okay, what's the meaning of bail? Uh, can you type the which spelling you are referring to? B A L E or B A I L? Uh, both. <laughs> Actually, I don't know the meaning of. Okay, those. okay, both, both. <laughs> so, uh, so bail, B A L E, is yes. uh, is sort of a a block um, of hay. 
So when we're harvesting hay or some other grass on a farm, when we put it in those big square rectangular blocks, um, it's, those are hay bales. Okay, so usually it's used as that hay bales. It's okay. also a verb. It's also a verb, so you can say uh, baling hay. That means if you're a farmer, you're cutting the hay, you're harvesting it from the field, and you're putting it into bales. Um, B a i l is a usually used as a verb, and it's usually used uh, to bail out. So yes. To bail out. If you're in a boat and the boat is maybe sinking or the boat has a bunch of water in the bottom when you yeah. take the water you take a bucket or something and you take the water out that's bailing out the boat okay so to bail out literally means uh, to take water out of out of the bottom of a boat okay thank you um, but the reason we see bail a lot in in modern society as Huynh co correctly mentions is to bail out also means to save, okay? It means to save because when you're bailing out a boat, you're saving the boat from sinking. And so we also say that um, if you bail someone out, it means you're saving them from something bad happening. Like from jail, for example, I have seen in some newspaper that they say uh, he was bailed out or something else. Excellent, excellent example. That's perfect. Yes. So if you bail someone out of jail, um, that literally means that you pay money so that they can come home and not be staying in jail. So to bail someone out can also mean um, to pay money to get someone out of jail. Um, another way that we see bailout is in the economy. Um, so for instance, in the United States recently, the government has had to bail out the automobile industry. So the government had to help automobile companies like Ford, Chevrolet, it had to help these companies by giving them money. So bailout is also um, an economic term. So it's okay. actually a very relevant word when you're looking at the news, especially um, in the United States and also a little bit in, in Europe. Oh, the European Union has been having some economic problems during the recession, so you might see that word used in, re in reference to Europe as well. Any other vocabulary you'd like to know uh, among these the A the A words here? Rage. Uh, okay, can you can you type it again so that I know the the spelling? Raise. Okay, R A Z E. So raise. It's oh, how do I describe this? Raise means uh, kind of to demolish. Yeah, raise means to demolish something. So um, raise means to demolish or to take down. Just so usually you would hear. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> there is uh, pain and pain. We said pain, not pain. When talking about the harm of the body, we talk about we said pain or pain. Uh, okay. So first, I'll finish. I'll just finish uh, one's question. So. So raise, R-A-D-E, means to demolish. An example is often um, they might raise buildings. So if you raise an apartment building, um, or sometimes in battles you could say that they raise something. It means they destroy it. I just about the meaning of the pain or pain. Um, and then, yes, sorry, so I'm, I'm moving on to your, your question now, Ahmed. So pain versus pain, um, P-A-I-N versus P-A-N-E. So pain, P-A-I-N, equals uh, pain like in your body. So you have aches and pains, you have uh, back pain, pain, something like this. So pain is when something hurts. Um, P-A-I-N. P-A-I-N is when something hurts. And P-A-N-E uh, is usually used as a pane of glass. So a window pane 
or otherwise a pane of glass means a rectangular piece of glass or just any piece of glass. So P-A-I-N is pain in your body and P-A-N-E is a pane of glass. Um, Igor asked about vein versus vein. So V-A-N-E, uh, V-A-N-E is like usually a weather vein. Uh, it's something that spins and tells you which way the wind is blowing. So usually you see them on top of buildings, usually um, on top of barns. So a weather vane tells you which way the wind is blowing. Um, and then vane, like this, V-E-I-N, is a, a blood vessel in your body. So it carries, um, it carries blood towards your heart. A vein is a blood vessel in your body. Um, do you know what vein means when you spell it V A? Do you know what that means? Um, when you spell it out? Uh, it types it also in the verbaling classes, but when when you spell vein, V A I N. Someone who can, that... who can give his offspring. Fine is useless. Uh, good. Someone so, yes. Yeah, give up of spring um, it's it's more so I think yeah useless is a good definition useless as a waste waste something yeah it's it's useless so if you say it was all in vain that means uh, all in vain means uh, like it it was all for nothing we, we worked really hard but it was all in vain that means it, it had no effect, okay? It, it, nothing happened. It was all in vain. It was useless. It was all for nothing. Vain also has a second meaning. V-A-I-N can also mean um, self-obsessed. So if somebody is vain, it means that they really they Proud think they're of very their beautiful. Self. <laughs> yep. Good, yes, yes. They say very proud. Um, yeah, good job, Fendi. So self-obsessed. Yeah, so vain means they think, you know, if I'm vain, I think I'm really cool and, you know, I have to enjoy the song. You're so vain. Maybe from the 1980s. I remember the meaning of that. So the next question we have is. Is from Haney. Yeah, Haney, you wrote in the chat. Uh, yeah. Main. Main. Okay. Yes, please. So main, M A N E, means uh, usually it means when an animal um, has a lot of hair on its head. We usually call it a mane. So um, a lion's mane, that's the big. Uh, that's the hair on a lion that goes like this, you know, around its head. Yes, yes, um, I get it. Also, yes. yeah, or, or, or a horse. A horse? Uh, yes, that's a... Or a sheep. They're very uh, Sheep mane. Does sheep have manes? I, I don't think... I, I would not say sheep's mane, but maybe... Maybe, some, maybe someone would. I don't know. I, I've never used that, but... Usually lions mean and horses mean are the biggest ones. Um, and then obviously M-A-I-N, the other spelling of main. Um, what does that mean? M -A -N. Major. That means important. Good, important, major. Yes. Okay, great. What else, what other words would you like me to explain here before we move on? Well, the second one. Well, uh, whale. Okay. So, well, first of all, W H A L E, whale. What does what does that mean? The first one. W H A L E. It's a fish. Big fish. The animal, right? Yeah, yeah. Big it's an fish. animal. Big animal in the sea. Okay, it's a big sea animal. Animal. And yeah. as an interesting fact, uh, fact, whales actually are not fish. Um, 
when we say fish in English, we refer to a specific, um, I guess, ta taxological group um, or taxonomical group. But uh, whales are mammals, so whales are actually big. Mammals that live yeah. in the sea. And so when you say whale, W A I L, that means to, it's usually a loud sound. It's similar to a scream, but it's usually a sound that's used to express grief. So um, when someone dies, for instance, the sound that you might used to express your sadness might be a wail. So it's a loud sound that expresses really extreme sadness or grief. Yeah, he, he says very sad and you cry out loudly. So that's a great example. That's a great explanation. Okay, uh, let's see. What about, um, what about, let me look at a couple of them. I like this one, um, great and great. Um, so before I explain these, why don't why don't we talk about how this magic E rule applies to what we've just gone over? So all these words in this first section use this magic E rule that we just talked about. Um, so great and great. Um, when you look at the first one, G R A T E. Okay. G-R-A-T-E. How do you know how to pronounce the A in that word? How do you know whether it's A or A? Uh, the magic E. Okay. What does the magic E do in great? Uh, make, uh, if, it, if it's there, uh, we will say uh, A, but not uh, great. Uh, without uh, uh, great, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I guess it is the same. It is the same. Um... Oh no. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's that's right. So um... if we have a if we have a magic e in the end of the board, that means we will use a long vowel of the a e i o of the vowels. So, I think uh, uh, the E is, is there uh, before the A in the great? Yeah, so the, se the second one, the magic E rule does not apply, right? The magic E rule applies to the first one, G-R-A-T-E. And I think you guys, it seems like you have a pretty good understanding of this, which is wonderful. So G-R-A-T-E, you know that it's great instead of grat because the E at the end makes the A be pronounced in a long manner, so great. Um, when you look at the second one, G-R-E-A-T, um, that one is just, it's just something that you, already, you obviously already know how to pronounce the word great, right? Um, it, means very, it means very good, great means very good. Um, yeah. So what is the meaning of the first one, G-R-A-T-E? Great, maybe it's pick up his uh, someone. Love is pick up something. Um, I think maybe the first person said it right. Great. Yeah. The way that I use great is usually grating cheese. Actually, it's when you take cheese and you put it on a little grater, and it makes the cheese into small. It's usually Thank used you. for uh, cooking, or can refer to something that's in the ground that covers up the sewer, okay? So great can also cover up the sewer. It's like a big piece of metal that you see in the street and you can lift it up and it, the, the passageway underneath leads to the sewer. So great as a verb means to small pieces like cheese. Great as a noun means a, a metal thing in the road that covers up the sewer system or the wastewater system. All right, wonderful. Um, so you can see on this page, if you scroll down, there are more, there are more examples of this magic E rule and then some homophones of words that use it. So things that make E say its name, things that make I say its name, and things that make O say its name. Um, if you 
have questions about these words as you're looking through this website later on, please let me know. Um, for those of you who don't know, I now have a Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Libby Verbling. Uh, if you have questions about class material after class, you can always feel free to contact me on my Facebook page. So if you have more questions about these homophones, let me know. And um, for now, we're going to move on to an activity before we finish class. Um, I'll post the link to the activity here in the Verbling classes as well. So, so please open up this link and we're going to do an activity about homophones. Okay, so yeah, please open up this website. It looks like this. And uh, this is a good set of activities to help us practice homophones. So like it says at the top and like we already know, homophones are words that sound the same but are spelled differently and have different meanings, like two and two. So for activity number one, Let's do this together. You can answer in the chat, in the written chat box, or you can answer by speaking. So this activity asks you to match the words to the correct picture. It says write the answers. Well, you don't have to write down the answers, but um, we're, we can just talk about which words um, are homophones of each other. So for Picture A, what does picture A represent? It's like a um, naked person in, I don't know, maybe in the bathroom taking a shower or something? Yeah, I think, I think that's what it is. It's someone who's not wearing any clothes. So which word would that be? And actually, yeah, why don't you type it in? Please type pear. it into, into the... Pear. Yes, pear. Type, pear. Yeah, good. Type it into the verbal in classes if you can so that I know which spelling you're talking about. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's bear spelled um, B-A-R-E. So what about, what about B? What's B? It's here. Uh, here. H-E-A-R-E. Good. B is hare, H-A-R-E. That's an animal similar to a rabbit. Uh, okay, what about C? What's C? Night. night. K-N-I-G-S-T. Good. Knight with a K. Those are the, those guys that take swords and they go fight to save the kingdom, okay? At night. What about D? What's D? Flower. Flower. Flower, Good. F -L -O -W. Flower with a W. Good. Flower with a W. Okay, E is? Night. Night without K. Night. And okay. Night without and a K. Yeah. All right, excellent. What is F? Flower. Flower. Good. F is flower. F-L-O-U-R, the kind you use for cooking. And G is? Beer. B-E-A-R. Good. B-E-A-R, the animal. Okay. And H is? Hair. H-A-I-R. Excellent. Hair. H-A-I-R. All right. So we obviously know which ones of these are homophones of each other. They're the ones that are pronounced the same. Um, so we're going to move on to the last activity. Um, it says challenge at the bottom. So go down to that and um, give me one second. I need to plug in my computer because battery is dying. Um, while I'm doing that, take a look at these words and try to start thinking of some homophones for some of the words. And I'm going to be asking you to type these homophones into the verbling classes um, so that you can show that you know which words are pronounced the same as these words but have different spellings. So take a look at this, and I'll be back in about 10 seconds.
All right, cool. I am back. Okay, so is that everyone can see uh, where it says challenge on the page? Yeah. So for the first word, aloud, can anyone type into the box, verbal in classes box? What's a homophone for allowed? Does anyone know? Homophones are the words that have the same pronunciation but different meanings. Exactly right. So something that's pronounced the same but means something different. And Igor answered correctly um, by typing. So allowed is spelled in the two ways that I just typed it into the chat, it, into the Verblin Classes chat. So it's A-L-L-O-W-E-D and A-L-O-U-D. Can someone tell me what both of those words mean? What are the meanings of those words? Allow the first one to, to permit someone to do something. Good. Allow. Uh, say something uh, in uh, higher voice. Good, excellent. So, allowed, the first one, if you're allowed to do something, it means you have permission to do it, you can do it. Um, allowed, the second one, A-L-O-U-D, means in a real voice. You say, if you say something aloud, it means you're speaking. So, I'll, I'll often say, can someone read that aloud for the class? That means can you read it in your normal voice um, for everyone? All right, cool. How about, um, hmm, what else? What's another good one? Um, hmm, okay, faint, this one, F-A-I-N-T. Um, it's shown over here. Can someone think of a homophone for faint? This is hard. It's like a uh, faint. Good, excellent, good job. Um, Hisham is right. It's spelled in two ways, F-A-I-N-T or F-E-I-N-T. Um, the first one, what does the first one mean with an A? What does the A one mean? Uh, weak or... Uh, don't know. Yeah, Not good. Is, yeah, faint means weak, so there can be a faint signal, for instance. That means there's barely any signal. You can feel faint, which means you feel a little weak. Or you can actually faint as a verb. That means you pass out, basically. You fall asleep or you fall over because you're very uh, weak. Okay, what about the second one with an E, faint? Uh, when I tell you something, uh, but it's not uh, true. Good. Yeah, a faint is sort of a trick. It's, um, it's when you try to deceive someone, okay? So it's uh, kind of like a, it's kind of like a, yeah, it, it's a trick. It's a trick designed to deceive someone. Okay, how about waste? W A S T E. What's a homophone for waste? A homophone for waste. Good, okay, so excellent. We have a couple of people answering there. A homophone for waste. W A S T E is waste. W I S T. Okay. What does the first one mean? W A S T E. What does that mean? It's a bad thing we should destroy or we should put in dust dustbin. Yeah, waste is kind of sometimes trash. Something we throw yeah. out is considered waste. Um, Useless. Or, yeah, waste is useless. It's not something we want. Um, also, we can say, don't waste that, right? Waste is a verb meaning when you use up something that you should not be using up. 
um, then you're wasting something. So yeah. don't waste don't waste your time. It means yeah. don't spend your time doing that. Okay. Um, so waste is like don't waste your time. Um, waste with an I. What does that mean? Center. Yeah, it's kind of like the center of your body. It's kind of um, the part of your body that's above your hips is your waist. Yeah. So if you or if you're talking about your waistline, that usually means you're talking about um, how you look and whether you are as whether you're as in shape as you want to be. You can say I'm watching my waistline. That means uh, I'm on a diet. <laughs> so watching my waistline is maybe means you're trying to lose weight. Uh, all right, good. Let's see. We'll do. Uh, one last one, or maybe two more. Okay, packed. P A C K E D. What's a homophone for packed? Maybe packet and a bag. I don't know. That's close. Yeah, that's close. But there is one that sounds exactly the same and it is spelled differently. Does anyone know? Again, these are challenge questions, so these are a little bit hard. Oh, yes. Packed, like, for example, when you packed something with somebody else. Like in a society? Excellent. Pact? Okay. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was looking for. So packed, P-A-C-K-E-D. That means uh, you packed something. So I packed my bags. Maybe you put something inside something else. Okay. Packed. I packed yeah. my bags. Um, but P-A-C-T, a pact, is a noun. It means an agreement. A pact. An agreement is an agreement, uh, usually between people in a society. So you can make a pact that you will not go to war with someone, maybe. You can make a pact to start a new society and make some ground rules for your society. Um, people today still make pacts. Maybe if I want to make a very sincere promise to my friends, um, I would say, okay, we're going to make a pact. Um, we're, you know, we're going to do this together, and uh, yeah, it's, it's good. Hashem, it's also like a deal. A pact is an agreement or a deal, and that's <laughs> like a really a love good. Pact? <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess you can <laughs> I guess you can make those. Uh, that's that's true. Um, that's that's a possible kind of pact as well. Um, good. So we'll do. Let's see one more. Um, How about road? Let's do road. R O A D. What's a homophone for road? R O D E. Good. R O D E. Um, so road can be spelled R O A D or R O D E. Um, can someone explain the difference between these, please? Uh, road is a plain thing which the vehicle is going on and the ROD is a basically is a metal which is uh, I don't know how to express okay so so good so the first one a road ROAD is what cars oops what cars drive on um, it's a verb then, or a second one Good, it's a verb, okay, and it's a verb in the past tense. Yes. What's the present tense of road? Ride. Good, present tense is ride. And what is to ride? What does that mean? A horse to ride. Good. So, for example, you can ride, you can ride a horse. It means, a bicycle. Yeah, it means basically when you sit on something that moves, okay, when you ride something. So, I rode, I can say, I rode the bus to school today. I rode the bus to school today. And that refers to the past tense of the verb ride. So um, definitely take the time to look at these materials yourself if you want more practice. All these activities are really good activities for homophones. Um, you can contact me on my Facebook page if you have questions. Uh, as always, so it's www.facebook.com slash Libby Verbling. Um, so if Maybe you like I have, that I have a page, yeah, yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, where is the answer of these activities? One, two. Uh, um, I don't. The answer to these activities. Yeah, I don't know if um, I don't know if the answers exist because I haven't. I I don't I don't have an answer sheet myself, um, so okay. I don't know. I can try to find these uh, find the answers and post them. If I find them, I'll post them on my Facebook page. Okay. But otherwise, you can ask me if you're not sure, um, because I don't know. I'm not sure. You can try looking on that website and seeing if they have the answer key. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you sure. very much. But uh, we want a schedule of your uh, classes because we suffer from this. Even Verblank uh, doesn't uh, post uh, your schedule in Verblank uh, site. Oh, interesting. So when you go onto my Verblank profile, it doesn't <clears throat> it doesn't list my classes. Yeah. Interesting. Because yesterday I go to your profile and verbal in the website. I didn't. I don't. Uh, I didn't find any uh, any schedule classes. So I okay. admire today. Interesting. Yeah. Hold on. Um. I'm just. Uh, I'm looking on the website right now, and I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna try to see if I can figure out what the problem is. N now it's um. okay. Oh, now it's. Because fine. I miss you for a long time. You can see your crisis now. Okay, yeah, because it says, yeah, now it's listing the classes correctly. Um, Verbling has been redoing their website, so they're launching a lot of new web uh, design. And so you might see an outcome because they're usually they're changing things right now, and they're trying to get a much better site soon. Um, so I'm, I'm excited because they're, they're doing a lot of really cool improvements. So thank you for your patience while they while the site works on that stuff. If you encounter more problems with the site, definitely contact me on my Facebook page because I can be in contact with the people at Verbling and make sure that they're fixing any problems that come up. So thank you for mentioning that. And if any of you see any other problems, definitely tell me and I can get them taken care of for you. Thank you. Um, thank no you very problem. much. All right. Thank you all so much. And I hope to see thank you delivery. very soon. Have a Thank good you. day. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.